Hi there, folk. Welcome back. Trust you had a good break. We are busy looking at a test, um, which I set for some of my matrix, um, based on the entire section of map work. And we, just to paint the scenario again, we've got Danny who lives in Bloemfontein. He's traveling all the way down to Port Elizabeth because he wants to participate in the Nelson Mandela Half Marathon. And we've picked up as well that uh, we've determined the route he has to follow. We've determined where he would have to stop along the route to fill up with petrol. And then we've also determined how long this whole trip would actually take him. Now, we now look at a little map. And the map we're going to look at is of the town of Craddock. Okay, we have covered this in one of our early segments, but let's just look and put it in context to this whole question. So here's the town of Craddock. We know it's Craddock. Why? Because it says Craddock Hospital and Total Craddock Garage. Now, here's some questions that we need to look at. All right. So, um, the Total Garage, named Total Craddock, on the map is in a good position for vehicles traveling between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth. Do you agree with the statement above? Explain. Okay, so... We look at Craddock, we see that Craddock station, and I'm going to use a different color here, is right here. Where is that? It's along this route over here. And if I look at this route over here, I can actually see that this route is the N10. Can you see that? National Road. 10. Now, what's important about the National Road 10? The important thing is this, that when I'm traveling between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth, I'm traveling along the N10. I'm going to go back a little bit here, and I want us to look at this a strip map. Just to put it all in context, when I look at this strip map, map, you can see that I am traveling along this route over here, the N10. The N10, I'm going along, and what happens? I go through the town of Craddock. So I have to follow this route if I'm traveling between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth. It's the most convenient route. I'm going through Craddock. Because I'm going through Craddock, all right, um, I'm going to pass that petrol station. Now, do you remember when we said that Danny's got a tiny little car and the car's got a small little engine of 30 liters, or small, sorry, petrol tank of 30 liters, and he had to fill up at Middleburg. Now, if I have a larger car with a larger tank, the chances are I'm going to comfortably make it to Craddock. And so I could actually use Craddock as a place of filling up with fuel. And because Craddock petrol station is along the route, it means I don't have to turn off the N10 and go and find a petrol station. Not at all. It's right over there. So I'm driving along the N10. I suddenly say, oh, there's a petrol station. Quickly fill up petrol and carry on along the N10. Okay, can you see now how we've taken a strip map and we've now applied that bit of information into the information that I require on a street map? Love this question. All right, now let's move on. Now, the Nelson Mandela Bay Half Marathon covers a distance of 21,1 kilometers, which has to be completed within three and a half hours. The race was won by Edwin Kuch, eh? Kuch, in 2016, right? In a time of one hour, one minute, and 16 seconds. These are facts, folk, okay? This was taken from a website. So Edwin Kuch won the uh, marathon in 2016 in a time of one hour, one minute, and 16 seconds. Now, Brian Smith, he came 850th. He didn't come last. There were runners after him, but we just chose a specific number. He came 850th, finishing in a time of 3 hours, 5 minutes, and 10 seconds. What was the difference in their time? Okay, so how can we do this? We can do this one of two ways. Either we go the easy route, we use our calculator, but if your calculator doesn't have the time function, then this is what we've got to do. We've got to say, right, 3 hours... 5 minutes and 10 seconds. We are going to subtract 1 hour, 1 minute 
and 16 seconds. Okay. Now, when we subtract, we cannot um, say 10 minus 16. So we're going to borrow a minute and we're going to say, right, we're taking a minute away here and we're adding it here. So now I've got an extra 60 seconds, 10 plus uh, 60 is 70. We now subtract, I'm going to land up with 454 seconds over there. 4 minus 1 is 3 minutes and 3 minus 1, 2 hours. In other words, Edwin finished the race 2 hours, 3 minutes and 54 seconds before our first, uh, the last guy, or the guy who came 850th, Brian. Just like that means Edwin, he could have run the race, gone and started again, run the race again, and still beaten Brian. How embarrassing is that, eh? Okay, so there it is. And I said to you as well, we could also use our calculator. So if you have the time function on your calculator, we could say, I've got three hours, I got five minutes, and I got 10 seconds. From that, I'm going to subtract one hour, I'm going to subtract one minute and 16 seconds. We push equals and there's my answer, two hours, three minutes and 54 seconds. Okay, easy, hey? Now, let's have a look at our next question. Our next question says this, Danny plans to run uh, at various speeds throughout the race. Okay, so Danny says, you know what, I'm going to start this race. The first two kilometers, I'm going to average four minutes per kilometer. I'm going to go for it, eh? Yes, like when that gun goes bang, I'm going to run like I've never run before. Four minutes per kilometer. That's really moving it. Then I'm going to slow down a bit. So I've run two kilometers over here. Um, let's do that. Two kilometers over here. For the next few kilometers, so from two to three, four, five. For the next three kilometers, I'm going to slow it down a bit and I'm going to average five kilometers per, uh, sorry, five minutes per kilometer. Then from five to 15, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. For the next 10 kilometers, Pulling up the brakes, boy. Going to slow right down. Why? Because I've had a look and there's a lot of hills there. I'm going to run eight minutes per kilometer, almost walking it. Okay. Then from 15 to 20, so I've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. For the next five kilometers, I'm going to speed it up a little bit at six minutes per kilometer. And then from 20 to 21.5, so it's 20, 21, so it's 1,1 kilometer, I'm going to put foot, eh? I'm running at four and a half minutes per kilometer. Why? Because I'm nearly at the end, I'm going to be so motivated, and I know it's like flat. So I'm going to do this. All right. So what should he have run in total? He should have run 21.1 kilometers. Let's check. Two plus three is five, plus 10 is 15, Plus 5 is 20, plus 1.1 is 21,1 kilometer. Okay, now let's have a look at the speed at which he does this. So for 2 kilometers, he runs 4 minutes. Now, folk, we know on our calculator, quite simply, 2 times 4 is 8 minutes. So he takes 8 minutes to run the first 2 kilometers. Then three minutes, averaging five minutes a kilometer. Three times five is 15 minutes. 10 kilometers at eight minutes per kilometer is 80 minutes, which is one hour, 20 minutes. Okay. The next five kilometers, six minutes per kilometer. Six fives are 30. Then 1.1 kilometer at four and a half. Now that could be a little tricky, so let's do that on our calculator. 1.1 times four and a half gives us 4,95 minutes, okay? 4,95 minutes. Please remember, that does not mean four minutes, 95 seconds, 
okay? It's 4, 9, 5 minutes. So let's see how long this whole trip takes him. So I'm going to take out my calculator and we're going to add it all up. I'm going to use my time button. And I'm going to say, well, in fact, let's do it. Let's, let's just do it mentally, okay? So I'm going to say 8 plus 15 plus 80 plus 30 plus 4.95 gives me a total of... 137 comma 95 minutes okay right let's change that into hours again I'm going to use my calculator I'm going to say right I got 130 sorry I've got no minutes this is in minutes not hours hey I've got no minutes I've got 137 Point nine five minutes and no seconds. What's that going to give me? That's going to give me two hours, seventeen minutes, and fifty seven seconds. That's how long the race is going to take. But that wasn't the question. The question is if the race begins at six thirty a.m. Show that Danny will finish the race before 9 a.m. So I have 6.30 in the morning. To that I'm going to add 2 hours, 17 minutes and 57 seconds. When I add that, I've got 57 seconds. I've got 47 minutes and I've got 8 hours. In other words, I'm going to, Danny's going to finish the race at 8.47.57 seconds. He's going to finish the race before 9 o'clock. Well done, Danny. Excellent stuff. Folk, that was a test I put together for my matrix based on this whole section of map work where they had to look at different maps and coordinate the whole thing. This distance problem we've looked at at the end uh, would have been based on an elevation map. Okay, now in summary, in this segment we covered the following. We have looked at various maps, we've integrated the information from these various maps, and we've answered questions on them. Okay, it's a lovely section map work, folk. It really, really is. But there's just so much that can be asked. So remember, when I'm learning map, uh, the section on map work. I'm not just looking at maps and saying, cool, this is a national map, that's a strip map, uh, this is a city map, this is an elevation map. I've got to know certain calculations that go into that. For example, how much petrol is required? What will the cost of petrol be? How long is this trip going to take me? How long is this trip? Where should I stop if I want to fill up with petrol? Or oh, phenomenal questions when you're planning a holiday of your very own. Folks, that's all I've got for you in this session. Trust you enjoyed it. And I trust you learned a lot from this question as well. I'm sure we'll meet again soon on the TV screen. Cheers.